Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Reconnecting Youth with Aisha. This is your host, Aisha Ali, and today's program is about a very relevant and uh, important issue and topic. So we're seeing more and more South Asian people becoming involved in our community, especially politics, which is a great thing because now there's more platforms and it's more accessible for people, South Asian population, to address their concerns, their issues. So our guest today is one who's involved in our community and is also running for the Sully um, Sully District Supervisor. We have here Dr. Shilika Pales. Thank you so much for joining us today. Aisha, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Thank you. So before we proceed, I'm just going to ask you to please tell us a little bit about yourself so that the audience can get to know you. Sure. Aisha, thank you for giving me an opportunity again. I'm Shilika Pale. I'm a mom uh, more than anything. Yeah. And I'm a working professional. I work in healthcare industry. I'm also a small business owner. Yeah. And I've been in the community of South Asian and mainstream community for the past 20 years. I've been living in Virginia for about 15 years or so. I've been helping South Asian con uh, community in various healthcare advocacy groups and uh, cultural and rest of the involvement, community involvement. So what did you study? And like, if you could tell us a little bit about your education background as well. Sure. I have a doctorate in rehabilitation sciences, oh, wow. specifically focusing on physical therapy. And I also have a master's executive business management, again, very focused on healthcare industry. Healthcare has always been my passion, like public mm -hmm. policy, community involvement, and community healthcare has always been part of my uh, passion. That's what I pursued even in my business education and also healthcare clinical education. So based on your education background, you're more than qualified for this job, I believe. Thank so you, Aisha. So what inspired you to run for the position of the Sully District Supervisor? So Aisha, I've been living in this community, as I said, for 15 years, just in Sully District for about close to 10 years. Mm -hmm. And in the past 15 years I've lived here, I feel like things have not gotten better. As the community is evolving and growing, I would like to see the infrastructure be doing well but in fact I see that we are going behind and I'll tell you a few reasons why if you are getting on 66 mm -hmm. um, you see how the traffic congestion yeah. is so the traffic congestion is something that I'm terribly worried about because as a small business owner and as an employee that works for an organization I'm on road pretty much yeah. all the time yeah. and I'm a mom as I said I have two kids so I take them to practices mm -hmm. and uh, hence I'm on road all the time so I've seen the traffic congestion get worse mm -hmm. and uh, I am slightly tired of paying the tolls. I mean, there has been many days where I end up paying $43 oh, wow. surge tolls. That's a lot. That is a lot. So I think traffic congestion, and I'm frustrated at the fact that there has been high density development that doesn't synchronize with infrastructure. And um, uh, the taxes, taxes keep raising. Property taxes have mm -hmm. gone three times higher since I have lived in Sully District. Real estate taxes have gone up. Mm -hmm. So I think what the part of me running is to res restore fiscal discipline in the county and also student achievement. I've, I'm involved in student, uh, I've been involved in schools as a PTA vice president, as enrichment coordinator, and I feel like uh, student achievement is not as vigorous as it should be, and I want to be very focused on that. So do you think, um, does the Sully District, do they have enough um, like, do they have enough South Asian people in like leadership positions that their issues can be just um, addressed or not? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, if you're looking at the slate of board of supervisor or sl slate of school board members that we have, especially in school board, I've noticed that not only do we have do we have less representation, mm -hmm. but also most of the school board members don't have uh, kids in the schools anymore. Oh. Granted, they've done um, probably they had students and they had their children in but the now past. They've graduated. They don't. Yeah. So sometimes I wonder if they are. To, uh, totally understand mm -hmm. and when I'm looking at the slate of county supervisor especially my opponent in Sully district since they really don't hold a real-time job in the economy yeah. that we are running in I wonder if they even understand what fiscal discipline is so and that's another reason why I'm running I feel that there should be much more representation mm -hmm. of South Asians. So Asian. you mentioned the restoring physical discipline and even on your if you go and check her website or um, I see that there's information how you're advocating for that if you could please tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So as a small business owner and as a person that very, very much cares about how I care for my patients but still provide my care, patients the best clinical care mm -hmm. with measurable outcomes, I feel like uh, not having fiscal discipline um, causes us not to be able to focus on outcome-based budgeting. Currently, the way budgeting works is with the revenue that is available in the past year, what I proposed is zero-based budgeting okay. and priority-based budgeting, outcome-based uh, mm -hmm. measurables, which means that we budget based on the priorities for our county that particular year, 
and also having a long sight vision and make sure our issues are prioritized in such a way that uh, we are measuring progress and if we don't think we are making the progress we should have we should feel like we need to be taking a step back mm -hmm. and uh, uh, prioritizing our budget again so i think that is the only way we can ensure that we are fiscally disciplined in our county and we are not wasting our money Oh, and even on your website, it mentions that you, um, your plan is that if there's certain programs that that are not being successful, you want to cut off the budgets and just like end the program and like monitor them and see like if they if they are being successfully like executed. But if they're not, then you want to take budget from them. So, are there any programs currently in the district that you believe that are like not successful and would? it will be more beneficial to take like, the budget from them and then invest them in, in a different program? I think, uh, I mean, inefficiencies are there everywhere. So not being in the uh, position, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm in a position to say I'm going to cut that program. Okay. I would talk very little about cutting the programs, mm -hmm. but I'll talk about efficiency. Okay. Is, uh, I think it's extremely in, in mm -hmm. important that we evaluate each and every program and see, is this actually resulting in desirable outcomes for the money that we are investing? Is this something that we need to outsource or privatize or semi-private? to ensure greater benefits to our Sully residents versus having blanket statement of having the budget and just uh, continue with the project whether they're making improvements or not. You also talk about um, on the website about like changing making changes to the pension system so can you please tell our audience like what is the current pension system and like what changes do you plan to implement? Sure so Aisha whether you know or you know about it or not the pension system currently is completely underfunded okay. so if we don't do any changes in the pension system in our within our Sully district and Fairfax County mm -hmm. we are going to have undue burden on our Sully, count, uh, Sully residents and Fairfax County residents down the road in five years mm -hmm. so what I'm proposing is and the, I mean please mind you this this is not cutting down on the pension, but this is reforming, yeah. right? And and making sure that uh, this uh, this not having a proper pension system poses risks to even people that are receiving the pension. Yeah. So I'm not only worried about people that are coming into the pension. Because there are not enough funds for them. There are not even, enough yeah. funds. So if you're to as a county employee, if you're totally dependent on the pension system. Um, I mean, you may not be able to receive the benefit if this plan continues because we are already an underfunded. Going back to your point of what would I do, I think we just need to modernize our 401k plans, think about reforming the entire system, and uh, talk about uh, how are we going to deal with it with people that are coming into the pipeline. Mm -hmm. I think there's a whole lot of work that needs to be done within the pension system, but I think the first step is acknowledging that whatever we have is underfunded and it's not working out, uh, and coming up with some com common sense creative solutions. And I also, as a small business owner, I strongly feel that sometimes putting the problem solving into residence mm -hmm. sometimes uh, gets us better benefits because I can't have all the answers. Yeah. Neither all the board of supervisors can have yeah. all the yeah. answers. Incentivizing people for giving the right uh, solutions mm -hmm. would result in having a problem solution between all of us. Yeah. Why do you think um, the pension system is underfunded? Is it just the availability of the lack of funds or is it? something else? Uh, I don't think it is the lack of funds. I no. think it is the negligence of looking and evaluating, going back to the same programmatic yeah. evaluation, right? As the things mm -hmm. are changing, as the economy is changing, as the job market is changing, yeah. we got to continuously, if that is lacking, if you don't have the vision to evaluate each and every program uh, fiscally each year, we end up in a rut situation where we just realize, oops, we have now underfunding system and that's what I think mm -hmm. has happened. Not one factor, but I think multiple factor and poor oversight has resulted in this. Yeah. So part of the um, uh, importance of resident safety is, apart from financial stability, is just like safety for just being feeling safe and like making sure that it's a safe community, you're, being, you're living a safe and secure life. What are your plans to ensure that? So Aisha, as, as you know, I have two children, so mm -hmm. I am uh, I'm very acutely aware of what is going on in the community. And I feel that I'm responsible for not only my children, I'm just responsible for all the oh, children. Yeah. I'm a mom, so, yeah. that, so that comes first to me. I think there are, there are so many common sense things that you can do from criminal justice reforms mm -hmm. perspective, like victim reinstitution and uh, ensuring that uh, cops and po police are fairly paid mm -hmm. so they actually stay in, within Fairfax County and ensure that they're protecting our residents, institution, thinking about uh, body cameras. to. And that, that was your, uh, I just want to let the audience know that this is um, this is what her doctor was in, so she does have the knowledge. She ha acquires the knowledge, and she knows like how to implement it. 
So I have done, uh, my doctorate is actually a clinical doctorate, oh. right? uh, but, uh, but, but I have done a lot of uh, discussions with uh, other supervisors mm -hmm. in the past. And I think uh, having body, uh, body cameras actually results in trust between civilians, right? So those are the things that we need to implement yeah. uh, to ensure that the entire community schools are safe for. Yeah, and also ensures that if you have a police encounter, you know that it's like the police office, you, there won't be any injustice happening because there's a body camera on there. So you also feel safe when a police officer stops you exactly oh, so lastly um you do have students um you do have children going attending schools Correct. um what schools i mean are they in sure. elementary or middle so i have a high schooler who goes okay. to chantilly high school okay. and i have a daughter who goes to navy elementary school schools okay. are very good uh, but there is definitely an academic achievement. Mm -hmm. Teachers are phenomenal, yeah. but I feel that teachers sometimes can be overburdened with administrative tasks and they're really not able to do the justice mm -hmm. for the children, right? As they would like Good. it yeah. to be because of administrative burden, but they're mm -hmm. very, very capable teachers. Uh, and uh, and Aisha, I'm sure you went to schools yes. around here. You realize that all the kids right now, it is one of the richest county in the country. Yeah. But uh, did you know that we have 800 trailers in schools and a uh, lot oh, of students wow. yeah. uh, sit through in the trailers? trailers yeah, because the lack of there's not enough classrooms. For exactly, everyone. exactly. Yeah. So m my uh, opponent and a lot of the candidates that are in school board and supervisory position has been there for 20 years mm -hmm. uh, uh, doing the same job. I I would like to question them and say this is the richest county yeah one how, of come, the how come we don't have enough classrooms? exactly yeah if you're talking about safety what kind of safety is that for the kids yeah. right i mean they are not in a physical building yeah granted it's kind of attached to the physical building but it's impossible to provide the same safety yeah. measures so going, kind of going back to your point about student achievement, I do a lot of enrichment activities for my children, wherever, whichever school they are in. And I feel like Asian Americans do well due to enrichment activities mm -hmm. that parents and uh, parental involvement. But I feel like there's a huge gap when it comes to Hispanic and African American communities. Okay. And my proposal is to ensure that uh, the academic rigor and academic curricular is so tight that there shouldn't be this achievement gap. Mm -hmm. uh, the achievement gap is, um, the kids should not only just benefit because their parents are able to afford to send them to enrichment activities, mm -hmm. but all the kids should benefit, regardless of your socioeconomic status or regardless of your skin color. Mm -hmm. All of them should be getting an extremely a tough curriculum, tight curriculum, so everybody benefits from it. I think part of that is a lot of times parents, like I know this is something that I've experienced and I've also witnessed in South Asian parents, that it's like they are very strict and very focused on just like following the curriculum and being on top of your academics but there has to be a balance between your extracurriculars as well exactly. and that's not that and I feel like if someone from if someone who's a South Asian parent and who's from the same race and understand like the culture and religious point of views would if they advocate for that it would influence a lot a lot of parents um, to send their kids and get them more involved and actively be involved as well in extracurriculars. What What are your thoughts on that? I absolutely agree. I think there's a fine balance. I always say physical and mental well-being is extremely crucial mm -hmm. for the success of kids' uh, curriculum. And that would be my statement. I think each parent should reevaluate on how the kids so we as much as we want to focus on academic rigor we also want to focus on ensuring that their mental and physical well-being is very is taken into consideration that's yeah. a very good question so we're having a really nice conversation an in-depth conversation about the plans she plan um if if elect when elected um she plans to um, dr pala plans to implement we're, we're going to take a short break right here and we'll be right back so don't go anywhere we'll be right back after a short break Welcome back to Reconnecting You with Aisha. Before we went on a break, we are having a conversation with Dr. Uh, Shirley Kapale over here. Before we continue, I just want to say that um, in South Asian population, there is one um, thing that we struggle with, and that's um, going out there and vote, whether it's for a presidential election or local election or just state election. Um, we struggle with voter registration. So I really want to encourage and emphasize that it is very, very, very highly important that you go out there and register to vote because without voting you won't be able to choose the candidate who will be there to address the questions concerns or any points that you have that you want to make sure that they're heard so if you want your voice to be heard it is really important so please 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 go out there and register to vote uh, and also not just register but also go out there to vote on the dates that you're supposed to cast your votes because if you just register, vote, register to vote and you don't go out there to cast the vote, actually, there's no point because then you won't be able to choose someone who's going to be there to advocate for yourself. So how can, coming from that point of view, um, how can more South Asian people in the community 
be a part of your campaign. Um, uh, thank you for emphasizing about voter registration. And uh, how can they help me? There are multiple, multiple ways to help me. I think we can start with absentee ballots. Mm -hmm. I mean, encouraging folks to actually do voter registration. And then uh, um, that then uh, if you are not able to be in town or unable to vote for any go uh, any reason on November 5th, then you have to do absentee ballots. Okay. I think that's the most important thing. But coming to my campaign, I think uh, I surely need a lot of help door knocking. So if there are people that are out there that knows their community and would like to door knock and uh, um, uh, like my policies mm -hmm. and agree with me, I think uh, please go to website paleforsully.com and um, subscribe to the newsletter or my phone number is on the website. Please call me door knocking, phone calls, uh, doing text messages to our voters, emailing the voters, mm -hmm. I mean, doing a lot of meet and greets to ensure that I'm out there in the community able to advocate for you all and be a voice for all of you. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's a great point that you mentioned um, and you're advocating for absentee ballots as well. So if you're like someone who, who has worked that day and won't be able to make it there or you have any other issues that you won't be able to go out there and vote on the same day or if you go to college that's like out of state or you're traveling, that's a great way to ensure that you still ha are able to vote and are able to address and get your voice heard through absentee ballots. So I think, thank you for mentioning that. Um, before we wrap up, any closing remarks for our audience or any message that you'd like to give out to Aisha, audience? first, I thank you all for letting me actually come in front of the camera and appeal to the audience. Uh, to Sully Districts and anyone listening to this within Fairfax County and outside of Fairfax County, like Aisha mentioned, uh, we have all good intentions, but if you don't come out and vote on November 5th, nothing changes uh, from our perspective. And it's extremely important South Asian community is well represented. Ted. So please take a look at my website again, paleforsully.com. And if you do agree with my policy, or even if you don't, don't hesitate to call me. But I would uh, urge you to look at my website and uh, come out and vote on November 5th. And thank you very much for your support. Thank you for joining us today. I also want to close once again to remind everyone to that you know it is really important to go out there and vote whether you do it through absentee ballots or you do go out there and vote in person that day it's bec it's important because if you want to get your voice heard and you want people to advocate for your rights and concerns it's really important to get involved if you're not going to um, run for re re if not going to run for leadership positions it's important that you actually go out there and support and vote for someone who is advocating for the rights that you agree with as well so please go out there and vote whoever it is you're going to vote for make sure you're educated about the candidate and just go out there and vote and become involved because there is there are chances there are more chances and more opportunities becoming for us to have a seat on the table but it's very important that we take an advantage and and actually avail that opportunity of having that seat on the tables. So thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll be back again next week with another guest. Thank you.